This is a journey deep into darkness. There will be no more stories after this one. What is she doing? Why is she doing this? They're watching. Why isn't Judy coming? She's doing this for him. She wants to rescue him. He's already dead. can feel you coming. of me. I never told you of the others. You hear them too, right? They've been around ever since the tragedy. Well, that's not quite true. Some are old, some are new, but they've changed. I think the darkness changed them just like it changed her. Can you see them? Over there. Why isn't she looking? <laughs> Why aren't you looking? She's in hell high. Look. Up ahead. Hell high. You see it too? You promised you could. Yes. yes. It is real after all. She's finally arrived in the land of mist and fog. The place the Northmen call hell. She's afraid. Wouldn't you be? You'd think she would get used to it by now after so many years. But the darkness... It just builds onto itself, growing stronger, towering over her. You might try and ignore it, turn away. But it's always there, just out of sight where you're most vulnerable. It's like it knows that just enough light is all you need to see its suffocating power. They can feel you. You might think she's brave to go on this journey on her own. But it isn't bravery that drives her. Bravery only means something to those afraid of death. Then it was fear runs far. I know 
what she's thinking. I hear her thoughts. It's not too late to get into the boat and go back. No one will judge her. No one will ever know. Oh, she heard us. There's no going back. And who pushes away a world that conspired to cause so much suffering. There's nothing to go back to, and worse to look forward to. Why don't you join us? Maybe you too have a part to play in this story. Focus. Do not forget my story, Senua, because your darkness comes from hell, and your fate lies there. They say the burning of a corpse will take you straight to Hela's gate, but gods and the living will follow this path. You must leave the Isles of Orkney across the Eastern Sea and find a road that leads north and down through deep, dark valleys. After nine nights of riding, you will follow a great river and will find a bridge covered in gold. The path to Helheim goes from there, across the river of knives that flows from the dark world of Niflheim. knives across which lies the halls of hell, the place they call Helheim. in Helheim, and the goddess Hela holds his soul there. Her dear beloved, Dillian. What is she doing? Why is she doing this? Why doesn't she turn back? She's doing this for him. She wants to rescue him. He's already dead. He's dead. Of his soul. 
Marcus can help. His soul still lives. She needs to save his soul. She wants his soul to be at peace. She needs to lay him to rest. He's already dead. She can save him. There's nothing she can do. Do you know where the you are? The bridge to Helheim. I forget its name. She forgets too. But she does remember that only the dead may cross it. That part wasn't so easy to forget. The old fool said there was a hidden path up to it. Let's see, shall we? speak of nine worlds. The world of men they call Midgard. Sky gods dwell in Asgard. The gods of earth, harvest, wind and sea dwell in Vanaheim. The good elves dwell in Alfheim. The evil ones dwell in Svartalfheim. The mountain giants dwell in Jotunheim. The fire giants dwell in Muspelsheim. Niflheim is the world of ice and darkness. Only the dead dwell in Helheim, and that is where you must travel. again, old friend. I'm listening. The runes seal the gates to hell. Focus your inner eye, and you too will see what's hidden in plain sight. Look, I can see one. 
Hold it in your mind's focus, eye. Focus, Find focus, one like it to open the gate. You focus. It's just that you Focus. Look towards the gate. And the gate will open. The gate is open. Go through the gate. Go through it. It's dangerous. It's at work. It's behind the gate. I think you it's not safe. I spent six years enslaved in hell. But I watched the Northmen. Learned their ways. I know you did. You listened? When everyone else laughed. My people paid the heavy price. Carry my stories with you, and together we will make the Northmen feel our fury! Another voice joins us. She once tried to make them go away. Pretend they weren't real. is ruled by the giantess, Hela, daughter of Loki. The gods feared her bloodline, bad on her mother's side and yet much worse on her father's. So, as a child, the Allfather cast her down into Helheim and gave her power over those who die of sickness, age, hardship and self-slaughter. In all of the nine worlds, only Hela can resurrect the dead. To Hela, your Dillion was sacrificed, and with her you must bargain. Yeah. Ah! This is coming. Ah! Ah! 
spread towards her head, the seed of the soul, until there is nothing left of her. <laughs> All of her suffering will have been for nothing. battles are fought in the mind. That is what Dillian taught her. With every defeat, the dark rot will grow and soon it will take her soul. But for now at least she still has control of her mind. And she will fulfill her vow. Whatever the cost. He's not Listen to me, Senua. The goddess Hela lies. that in the beginning there was nothing but darkness. Bitter cold to the north, fiery hot to the south. They say the cold formed ice which melted from the sparks from the south. The power of the darkness gave life to the dripping ice and the first giant was born and was named Emir. The ice continued to drip and the power of the void gave life to it, and it became a cow whose milk fed the giant. That's right, a cow, but you weren't expecting that.
Ymir was a frost giant, a being of darkness. And all his sons and grandsons were dark after him. Of his daughters and granddaughters, some were monstrous, but others fair. But there was another who came from the ice. Buri. In shape, he was like a man, big and powerful. His son, Bor, took a fair giant to be his wife. And they had three sons. Odin was the eldest. And the Northmen hold him to be the foremost of the gods. The Old Father. hides the path to Valraven. Don't trust your eyes. Find another way to see the truth. was never really there.
hold her. She will find what she's looking for. comes from ravens, allowing the ravens to break his magic seal. Show me what you have seen, Truth. Look how much it's changed. with the mark of Valraven. Which ravens? Can't you see which ravens? Line up the ravens. Uncommon, you see. 
we call such a person a gallant. Some like truth become gallant in search of penance. Others, like Sam, the perjure curse. Those who make it back are forever changed. The Northmen say that Odin and his brothers killed Ymir, and that the world of men was formed from his corpse. They made his bones into stone, and his flesh into earth, and his blood into the salt sea. They set his skull to be the bowl of the sky, with his brains for clouds. Odin and his brothers caught the sparks flying from Muspel, and made them into stars. And to protect the new world from the giants, they used Emir's great curving eyebrows as walls.
Northmen say you must sacrifice in order to receive. They tell how the runes were revealed to Odin only in sacrifice. He hung himself from the world tree, and he stabbed himself with a spear, and he dedicated the sacrifice to himself. For nine nights he hung on the tree without food or drink, and at last he saw the runes below him. He gave a cry and gathered them in his mind and learnt them. Then he fell from the tree. Do you know what it's like to leave everything behind? Your home? Loved ones? To head deep into the wilds? Perhaps never to return? Senua does. Because when darkness speaks, it changes everything. Turning home into a foreign land and loved ones into strangers. Exile makes sense when you realize that you were never really home in the first place. The Northmen say that Odin is always in search of knowledge and wisdom and magic. There was a very wise being named Mimir who guarded the waters of wisdom which flow from the roots of the world tree. Odin wished to drink from this spring, but he had to pay a price. So he gouged out his own eye as offering to Mimir. He drank from the well and traded one way of seeing for another. She went to the wilds a long time ago. 
Why did she go to the ring? She wanted to fight her own darkness. <laughs> she thought she could beat her own darkness. Did she beat her darkness? No. <laughs> it nearly killed her, but she tried. Druth. Druth helped her. If it wasn't for Druth, she'd, she'd be, be dead. dead. She can't beat her own darkness. She wanted to marry Dillian. She came to beat her own darkness and marry her Dillian. But, but she didn't thought, work. She thought her curse. She thought her curse would spread to him. She thought she'd bring the darkness to him too. She nearly died. She thought the curse made her tainted. Druth helped her. The Northmen say that Odin has two ravens. Their names are Thoth and Memory, and each day he sends them out to fly all across the world. Upon their return, they perch on his shoulders and tell him everything they have seen and heard. In this way, he learns of things far and wide, and for this reason, he is called the Raven God. Cinema, like Odin, you must seek wisdom through thought and memory, if you are to succeed in your quest. The ravens. the ravens. They've gone. They've gone. No. Half of them have gone. They've gone. Some are still there. But where? Some are still there. The oh, ravens helping. Why is it? He's not helping. It's a trick. Quiet. Quiet. I can't say. Out in the wild. And cold winter winds. That's where? She no longer felt fit for this world. She almost gave in to the darkness. She remembered Dillian's words. She remembered her promise. She resolved to fight on and kill that which had become a part of her.
Where have we gone? Because she did it. What does that mean? Looking back, I was so naive to think she could banish it on her own. The further she saw into the darkness, the more she struggled to see anything at all. And the glow, the smallest hints of shape, sound, and thought, grew in strength until they consumed her whole. Before she knew it, the darkness had her in its claws. The gate is open! Open! There is no such thing as victory when it comes to the darkness. It's like it doesn't want to kill her. And yet, it will gnaw at her, biding its time. Only when she is at her weakest will it strike to kill. Will she find Dillian? before her time comes. Ravan's final illusion to face him in his keep. I know you can do it, Senua. You have the sight. We both see the darkness. We can fight it together. Speak to me, Drew. Tell me a story. Senua, listen. I will tell you the tale of a man called Findan. The Northmen captured Findan's sister, and his father sent him to pay for her release. But they took his gold, put him in chains, and held him for a day and a night without food or water. Then they released him. I don't know why. Upon his return, his father's enemies in Erin set fire to his home. His father burnt to death, and his brother was killed. But he escaped with sorrow in his heart. His father's enemies offered redress for his loss and invited him to a feast. It was at a hall near the sea. But when he went there, they betrayed him to the Northmen, who enslaved him and took him to hell. Six years later, his slave masters landed on the shores of Orkney, burning all before them. And into that fire, Findan made his escape. What was Findan burnt away that day? But from the flames, a new man stepped forward, and Drew was born. Drew. The man that I am now. And though Findan never set eyes on his dear sister again, I, Druth, have found you, Senua. I wish you could have seen my home before these dark times.
gate is open. It's open. It's darkness. I know it from the wilds. It's coming back for me. Void that may be this time. There is no coming back. Help me. But there, Help. in the darkness, sense. And she remembered what he told her. Hear me. Reach out to me. Senua. Take my iron mirror. Look into it. For it is a window into the underworld. Within, you will see the face of the darkness that you fear. And if you focus, like I have taught you to, you will also see that as much as the darkness has you trapped within its veil, it too is trapped within yours. Focus. 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 I see you. I see you now. You led me to the wilds. You trapped me there. Oh, 
nearly over. Finish it. She finished him. to defeat. Unfair, isn't it? In those dark winter nights in the wilds, there were times when she considered letting go. If it weren't for truth, a chance encounter in the wilds, she would not have heard his stories of the Northmen. She would not have this chance to find Dillian's soul. I'm coming. I still hear you. Just 
to. They're there. If you look for them. You have the sight, just like I do. Once you can see into the underworld, the underworld and all the souls within it will see you. Don't be afraid when they speak to you. I will always be here to guide you. Did you see her? That was her mother, Galina. She was a priestess, a healer. She taught Senna where to see the weave that binds the world together. And it was beautiful. It was a time before the darkness. But when it did come, it first came for her mother. Senua still sees her face from time to time, hidden in the world. Like she's still watching over. She misses her so much. Another challenge. There's another challenge. She hasn't Set. challenged. Set. Set. Set.
Senua. We each walk these lands, gazing towards different horizons, some of us further than others. Your father cannot see what you see, but there is nothing wrong with seeing the world the way you do. Yes, I heard their screams, and I still hear them now. To Helheim is sealed to the living, but you already walk amongst the dead. Look towards the gate, and you will see that it has opened. They had 
slaughtered me like the others. And I rode their storm of fire, death, and slavery to many lands. This darkness you speak of? <laughs> I know it well. And I'm still here to fight it. Get through. She'll need to find another way. Truth and scent. Find your own path. There's always another way. There's always a way. Find your own way. You just have the to Northmen find say it. that the defender of Muspel 
is called Surt, the foremost of the fire giants. His name means the Black One, because he is like something burnt. The Northmen believe that he sits at the border of Muspel with his flaming sword, and at the end of the world he will leave his post. He will travel to Asgard and Midgard, waging war against all the gods. He will be victorious, and then burn the whole world with fire. Northmen believe that the world will be destroyed someday. They call it Ragnarok, the destiny of the gods. Asgard will be attacked by Surt and the fire giants. A monstrous wolf will swallow the sun, and the gods will fight in vain against their enemies. There is nothing they can do to prevent it, but Odin ever seeks knowledge and magic, hoping, hoping to find a way postpone that dark day. sacrifices, burning slaves like me to reveal the path to Surt. I searched for meaning in their suffering, in their eyes, but they just screamed like helpless pigs. I asked the gods for mercy, all of them, even theirs. None answered. In the end, I set myself free. Defy the gods, Senua! Find your own path, like I find mine! My gods abandoned me! I am alone.
follow the path to Surt. Northmen of Hell worship the Devourers, insatiable gods of darkness. I come from Eren, Senua, where I once followed my own gods, the Tuatha de Danann. Why did you abandon your gods? Senua, I was a man of knowledge, not a warrior. To survive, I did things. Bad things. Like you, Cinema. The man I once was has died. And when that happens, even gods you worship can die with you. The Northmen say that at Ragnarok, the sons of Muspel will travel to battle in the ship called Nagalfar, the corpse ship. And when the sons of Muspel leave the ship and ride to battle, it will be as though the sky had split open and Surt will lead them. Wherever he goes, flame will erupt before him, and fires will burn behind him.
Northmen say that what we see as a rainbow is the bridge that goes from the world of men to the world of the gods. For now, they say the frost giants and the mountain giants cannot cross it. But they say that when Ragnarok comes, not a thing in this world will be safe. The Rainbow Bridge will break under the onslaught of the fire giants riding on flaming steeds. Senua, I have seen the fire of Surt spread far and wide, and to our lands. Ragnarok is coming. Tell me truth. How did you escape your darkness? Senua, once I found my purpose, I was no longer enslaved to the suffering I had to endure to reach it. Unclouded by fear, I could see it clearly in others. Even my captors feared the fire of certain. And so, during one raid, I took my chance and ran, knowing that they would not follow. The fool ran into the fire. <laughs> they left me for dead. Maybe they were right to. But here I am. Free. I'm glad I found you in the wilds. Find I wouldn't the fire have fire you. To follow the path to Surt. Run! 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 
through the fire. Keep running. Go on. Nothing will stop you. Run, Senator. Run, run, run. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. This darkness takes everything. Everyone. Senua. Are you sure you want to do this? We can fight this together. Side by side. We always do. This is my battle. I have to face it alone, away from you. Where will you go? I don't know. For how long? I don't know. I believe in you. You know that. Just promise me that you will come back to me. I want you to say it. I want you to say it. I will come back to you. I promise. Did you think that I would let you go? That you lost me? 
back in the wilds. I will never let you go. You can't get rid of me. I am your shadow. And I will be watching when you draw your last dying gasp. I'm not ready to die. You will be when you see what they did to your dear beloved. Wow. 
I set on a path when there is a new road ahead. The only one that makes any sense. The journey to Helheim is never a straight one. Each must find their own path. Align yourself to its secrets, and you will find yours. However you come to the gold-covered bridge that leads to Hell, you may find it guarded by a giantess. She will ask your name. She will ask your lineage. She will ask your business. 
The Northmen tell of the warrior woman Brynhild, who leapt into fire and rode to hell to join her slain love Sigurd, and is challenged by the giantess. Oh, Senua, your father does not hate me. He just fears the souls in the underworld. He cannot see that they are already afraid. But I am their healer, and I must answer their cries for help, even if it displeases him. Hela possesses large dwelling places in Helheim. Tall are her walls, high are her gates. The name of her dish is hunger. Her knife is famine. On her threshold all will stumble. Her bed is called sick bed, and her bed hangings are called flames of a funeral pyre. They say she is easy to recognize, half black and half the color of flesh, and her face, menacing and grim.
us it. It's coming. That song again. Is it? Is it? Is it? It's Helen. Yes. The source of the darkness. It's coming. This is your moment. doing you're showing weakness stormy seas and lost souls she's dreamt of this before they say dreams are visions of our memories thoughts and fears as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people fear seeing the world through her eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You fail the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's cursed. The shadow hates Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself. Because there is no one left to do that for you. Everywhere. What's that? Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. <laughs> Just do like it. your God, sword. Come on. Dare. <laughs> <laughs> is worse than you could have imagined. Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory, a feeling, a song. Go, go, go. Ow. 
before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zimbel, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs, errands out in the Orkney Plains. That was her world. Like this one. Barren and lonely. hero. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses him, so King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. Sigmund and his brother seem certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. Sigmund's face. He bites the wolf's tongue. 
The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan, one that is cold of heart and pure of blood. shapes with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy, and finds him strong and fearless, and so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. Luck is not on their side. They're captured, and Sigir has them buried alive. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. No one? 
Well, I I watched you, and you learnt all of that from watching me. <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dilly. I'm here for the warrior trials. You come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you, make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. world change the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, don't tell her. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come out but only to tell him the truth. But she had slept with him, her brother, to beget a strong avenger. I am not fit to live, she says, and walks back into the fire. Strike vengeance from your heart, Senua, as there is always a heavy price to pay. Here is the end of Sigmund's story. He was a fierce and great warrior who fought many battles. But one day, an old man came onto the battlefield. Although shadowed by a hood, Sigmund saw that he only had one eye. The man raised his spear, and Sigmund struck at it with his sword, but the sword shattered into pieces. Sigmund then knew that this was Odin, and thus that victory could not be his. He bowed his head and accepted his end. Dying, he tells his wife that she is with child and that her son will one day make a great weapon out of the fragments of his sword. The sword named Gram.
forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn, and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. So strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes, and it forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. You remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She is a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrving. Trials, like when we I'll first met, him. remember? <gasps> What's that? <gasps> Did you hear that? Nothing. Was that voices? Is that the answer? Oh, we saw the voices are dead. Not Dillian. Dillian's calling to you. Can Where you is hear? he? Where is he? He sounds like he's getting further away. <gasps> Herva disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, 
and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. Within the burial mound, Herver calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave mounds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you. <laughs> the voice is getting louder. Listen, Dillian. <gasps> listen, listen, listen. It's him. Listen. It's getting louder. There he is. You're getting closer. Keep going. Send one. Follow the voice. We're nearly there. Dillian, the voice. It's him. Doesn't sound like Dillian. What's anymore. happening? It's not him, it can't be. What's that sound? The voice is changing. What? <sighs> Herver ignores her father's warnings. The grave mound opens, and it seems to be full of fire. Again, Herver demands her inheritance, but her father warns her that the sword is cursed and would be the bane of her family. But he relents and brings her the sword. She leaves the island with it, but the curse holds true, and death would follow in the years to come. And so, Senua, the misdeeds of a father have cursed his daughter. i 
பாங்க I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through you. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy? Chief. No. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said I could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come. Send one. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. Where are we? I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? This place feels... It's... Creepy. Creepy. It feels wrong. It feels strange. Where is it? Where are we? Get back. This there he is. There it he is. is. The light. Go towards it. He's in the house. Find He's him. going in. He's disappearing. Follow him. Don't let him disappear. The air Where's is it gone. Keep going. How do you find it? It's just a trial. It's just another test. You just have to solve it, and then you will find him. Then you will succeed. He's <laughs> It's a test. Like the old warrior trials. Dillian will help me. She went to the river with Dillian and the others. To the water. She could taste the rot. But no one else could. She knew something was wrong. Something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. The bridge. It's broken. 
fix it. You have to fix it. How are you going to fix it? You can't get to the house until now. You have to find him. Quick, get to the house. Get to the house and finish this trial. It doesn't finish until you get to the house. Before he disappears, Noah. You have to get in. The Northmen speak of a death moon, a light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farm hands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. That is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, then beware, because there will be death in that house. Come to me. Where are you? I'm here. I'm right here. Are you in there? Come out here, Sabah. Find him. You have to find him. The runes. Focus. Focus on the runes. Focus the runes. There was a Northman called Grettir. Big, red-haired, immensely strong. But he was afraid of the dark. It happened one night that an undead creature came to his house to drag him outside into darkness and kill him. He resisted with every ounce of his strength. He clung to the door frame, but it gave way, and they spilled out of the house, and the monster fell back, and the moon shone down on its ghastly face. Grettir, terrified, cuts off its head, but is cursed forever. From that moment on, wherever he was, he would see those hideous eyes staring back at him. Sometimes we allow our own fear to haunt us to our grave. What's that sound? Delius! Where is it? I'm not safe. You're dying. You're lost. You're dying. This is 
Shanua! What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just... people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. That doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Without you, this darkness has made me a monster. What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? What if, this is to do with what if we're wrong? The sword will never be wrong. <laughs> what if this is the end? It's just a trick. It's just a pointless test. You've been fooled before, you could be fooled again. Being tested. You don't know. It's just their game for you. You never know which way it's going to go. <laughs> to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him, only good things were told of him, yet he was the first of the gods to die.
to see what the mask sees. Stay back, don't. Where are we? What is this? It's the same. It's another world. It's lighter. It's nicer. I like it here. Can we stay? Let's stay here. I like the bridge. It's not broken. It's fixed. What happened? Let's cross it. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world, fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness, swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him. Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. seems so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Senna explored new paths into the unknown. The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear.
He was the only one she could trust. Could she trust him? She had light within her when she is only She is pure darkness. Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking part. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Hurth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Hurth is slain. how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She is put next to her husband, and the pyre is lit, sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. Why didn't she listen to her father? She thought she could defy her father. Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go, and she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. You and Dillian. You can see the darkness within you. The realities tearing at her soul. In a way that nobody else did. Oh, the 
she was strong. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur. Weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let Hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. Dillian never much cared for the underworld, and looked dimly upon the druids, like her father, Zinbal. I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see, and he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, glad to see the world through his eyes, and 
slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. You're going to fall, Kev. No, she's not. She's not going to fall. She's strong. She's steady. She can do it. You can do it, Simon. Father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> My dark dear need a little of the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? You give up the beautiful world. You, only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my head. Just another part of the person I love. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it was. I'm so sorry. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking you from the inside. You're disappearing out. one memory at a time. Every time you remember, it disappears. They're going to take everything. Everything you have, the memories of ghosts. They belong to the gods, not to you. They're eating you from the inside. They want to kill your soul. They want to crush it. They want your body. They want your soul. They want your mind, and they're going to take it. The memories were yours, but they're the gods now. Nothing is yours anymore. The Northmen say that they're all father. Odin gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. They've gone. I'm still here. It's so quiet. So dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. Let rise and fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. I can't go on. 
William? Find a way. I'm not leaving you here. I think I'm somewhere else now. But the breeze has gone. <gasps> Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to it. Let's reach the water. Good. That's your way out. Follow it upstream. I'm so sorry. I thought I left us all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of me. It won't let me go. Shenua, my father, he taught me the hardest battles are fought in the mind, not the soul. You're no coward. You proved that to me in the warrior trials. This is just another battle. You can beat it. This isn't for that. You don't have to help me. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior. You need me like you. Okay. I'll do my best. Shh. Shh. I know what you're thinking. He's not really here. Seems there's no escaping the past in this place. She's forced to relive it. To what end? There is a house. Inside. Don't be afraid. Dillian, there's something in you. Do you see it? No. Then it cannot see you. Quietly move past it, one step. Not following me. Leave it behind. Keep moving forward.
didn't come in the house. It stinks. Of death. The darkness is testing you. But you are in control. As well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. Did you help me? Spend hours, days even, trapped within herself in the dark. You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillian was helping me. And the sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. Zinbel's parting words still haunting her. The darkness came back with a vengeance. The plague. Tony? Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us! <laughs> you have blood <laughs> on your hands! They're coming for you now. They're coming. They're coming to get to you. Hold the heavy strong. Hold it! Hold it! Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Unleash the sword. She's going to die. No, 
No, she isn't. She needs to focus in the back. Focus on the back. Focus now! The corpse waved through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them. The ship that had sailed from the land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun. Come not with a sword. Come not crying over a naked corpse. Come not with a disturbed mind. the suffering, Senua. Does your precious gift of sight let you see the souls that rot here in this sea of corpses? Do you feel the blood running cold on your skin? Do you hear their endless cries? Do you smell their putrid wounds? They were once brothers, sisters, and loved ones. And look at what you have done to them. All because you were a coward, because you ran from your curse instead of facing it. When you turned your back on the Father Zinbel, you turned your back on the gods and let the darkness wreak havoc on your people. Why must they pay for your heresy?
the world would have been spared this horror. It's not too late. She's calling for you. Why don't you join her?
Come to bread when you rot and let your blood seep into the seas and the rivers of hell. Isn't that what you deserve, my poor dark? Give the darkness what it wants and let it swallow your soul and destroy all that you are. Why are you fighting for someone who is already dead? Just look around you. What hope is there for you, even if his soul could be rescued? Do you think he would thank you for what you have done to him, to his friends, to his father? <laughs> gave up on her world to follow in the footsteps of her mother to go to a place where the darkness couldn't reach her Senua look at me do you hear them Calling for me. We've lost so many. And I've lost my father. I can't lose you. You said it. I have blood on my hands. I didn't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Simba was right. Everyone will suffer. Zimbal is a fake. He is a hateful, bitter liar. He's poison. And his words still haunt you. Who do you trust? Him? Or me? Do you still believe in me, Senua? In us? Sword with which to fight in more ways than one. And she gave him 
her word, never to surrender. All she needed was a little help, a little hope. Into the mountain. Can you see it? Shall we tell her where to go? It's not far. Go on. Look up. Just up there. Listen to us. That's it. She Shall we tell it. her where to go? Hmm. Shall we? Does she know which way to look? Does she know her way into the mountain? She's a good girl. Oh, isn't she? Look up. So clever. Did you miss us? Oh, she did. There's a door. You can do it. You can see it. Come on, Sam. Go away. I'm not listening. tell you of a great hero named Sigurd, son of Sigmund, no less. Born after his father's death, Sigurd is cared for by the dwarf, Rain. But Rain does not love the boy. Instead, he plans to use him for his own ends. You see, Rain's father possessed a great treasure given to him by the gods. But Rain's brother, Fafnir, killed his father and took the gold all for himself. Fafner hid the treasure out on a heath and could not leave it. And from the evil in his heart, he turned into a dark creature. A dragon. You are here, Senua. It can smell your stink. What are you afraid of, Senua? How will you say Dillion if you are too much of a coward to step into the shadow? They can't stop me. Then do it. The beast is stalking you from the shadows. Your sword is useless here. to do. Your father wants them to go away. And he only hurts me to silence them. 
But he's gone now. They always come back. He says I will die if I go with them. They say I'm already dead. No, oh, they want me with them. Stop! That's why they crawl through the walls. Don't Do you them. see them? <laughs> Do you see their faces? <gasps> He's coming! Senor! Help me! Help! Get me out of here! Don't go! Where has she gone? She's disappeared again. She shouldn't be here. She escaped the darkness. She, she took her own life to escape it. She can't remember when it started. When her mother lost her smile. Her eyes gazing past her towards a world she could not see. This is what happens if you reach for the underworld, he said. It was a lot to take in for a child. And the first time she felt the cold chill of fear. I don't talk much about her father, Zimbel. I suppose I just didn't want to risk upsetting her. But it doesn't matter now, does it?
torch is going out. No, it's not. It's going to run out soon. She hasn't got much time. Out. She's too slow. It's not going to burn out. The darkness will come again. sole desire is to possess this dragon's accursed treasure, and he uses Sigurd to reclaim it. He tells Sigurd the story of Fafnir's gold, and the good-hearted hero promises to slay the dragon if Rain would forge a strong sword for him. Sigurd remembers that his father once possessed a sword given to him by Odin. Odin broke the sword to bring about Sigmund's death, but Sigurd's mother still has the pieces. And so Rayan reforges the famous sword. Sigurd uses the sword first to avenge his father, and then he and Rayan go in search of Fafnir. Do you feel it? The beat? 
beast is crawling into your mind, searching for weakness. It found your mother, and used her to trap you in here. Did you see her die? I don't remember. I was only five. They told me she escaped the darkness, that she's with the gods. But what if they lied? What if the darkness took her and trapped her here? The dragon Fafner is so large and deadly that it would be impossible to kill him face to face. But each day, Fafner crawls across the heath to find water. So Sigurd digs a pit in the dragon's path and lies in wait in it. When Fafner slithers overhead, Sigurd sinks his sword into the dragon up to the hilt. Sigurd leaps from the pit and Fafner sees his killer. He warns Sigurd that the treasure will lead to his death, as he went to the death of all Kaolid. Sigurd replies that death comes to all men, and every man would want to be wealthy until that day. And he takes the treasure. It's a trap. The beast is coming. Keeping me away from the others. Away from Tilly. I won't give up. I'm not going to run away from Tilly. I won't give up. I'm not going to rot in here. I'm going to find Dewey. Thank you. 
He was doing his best. She never, ever He was trying to save her from the darkness. Zinvel was right. Zinvel was trying to save her from the darkness. But she couldn't and now everybody is dead because of her. It's all her fault. All her fault. <laughs> she, she should have known. She should have known. Why doesn't she learn? She when she learns, she doesn't understand. Now the darkness has the inside. And it will take it and never give it back. She can search and search, but she will never find it. She's let the darkness in. It's the end. The darkness will take her like it took her mother. She can't resist. Pointless even. Although Sigurd kills the dragon, Rian wants to keep Fafnir's gold all for himself. Rian also wants the strength and wisdom of the dragon, so he drinks its blood and asks Sigurd to roast Fafnir's heart for him. Sigurd does so, but when he touches the roasted heart to see if it is done, he burns his finger. Without thinking, he licks his finger and tastes the dragon's blood. In that moment, he understands the language of birds and hears them talk nearby. The beast knows. The beast knows exactly where she is. She's falling for it. She's falling for it. Sigurd's newfound power lets him hear the birds speak, and they say, Sigurd should eat the heart himself. Rian wants Fafnir's gold. Sigurd should kill Rian before Rian kills him. Sigurd should find Brynhild, the Valkyrie, who sleeps an enchanted sleep. Sigurd heeds the bird's advice. He kills Rian, eats Fafnir's roasted heart, and takes Fafnir's treasure. And he embarks on a new quest to ride to Hinderfell and find Brynhild, the Valkyrie. What's she doing? She's lighting a fire. She's making light. She's making a fire. She's got light on the other side. She's 
should be safe. Let me quick. Faster, faster, keep going, keep going. Faster, faster, keep going, keep going. What is she doing? Stop! Sigurd learns that Brynhild had once disobeyed Odin, and so he had her punished, stuck her with a sleep thorn, and put her body within a rampart of burning shields. Only a man who knew no fear would ever reach her. But like me, Sigurd is fearless, and passes through the flames, just as I did, and wakes the sleeping warrior girl. She teaches him the secret wisdom of runes, namely victory runes, ship runes, runes for persuasion, runes for truth, runes for healing and help, runes for perception and power. Like Sigurd, the greatest young warrior of the north, you must learn the secrets of the runes to fight amongst the gods in hell.
People think of evil as an unnatural, invisible force, and so invoke the gods for protection. But evil can come from the hand behind the gods. A familiar hand, cold and cruel. He tried to fix her with his rituals, kept her trapped in that hole. She couldn't say which was worse. The darkness. Or the monster that her father had become. Yes. I fear you would have let go of this life. All this time, I've wanted to protect you from the truth that would have destroyed you a long time ago. But you have conquered your darkness at every turn. You deserve to see behind the veil of darkness. Then take me to you the must mountain. to trust you. As deep as we can go. No. I won't stand in your way. She has to trust him. Follow it. You will not survive what is in there. I know. What else can she do? Nothing. She doesn't want to turn. She has nothing. She has nothing. She's come this far. She wants to go forward. She must this. I won't let 
the darkness trick me again. I know you're safe with the gods. I can feel Hela's gaze searching for secrets inside of me. Secrets that even I can't see. I'm not here to fight my past. I'm here for Dillian. I will fulfill my vow, whatever the cost. say the world will come to an end. They call this Ragnarok, the destiny of God. First, there will be a terrible winter, three years long. Then, mankind will turn on itself. Brothers will fight each other to the death, and people will forget what they owe their kindred. Times will be hard. Crimes will be great. It will be an age of axes and swords. The wind will blow through abandoned halls. Wolves walk where children played. The world will fall into ruin.
No one can bargain with Helen. What does Helen want? What can she give her? She could give her her ransom. No. This isn't just a broken bridge, is it? Mother, you showed me how to see further. To see the hidden wonders in our world and explore new paths into the unknown. To lead so that others may follow or to warn so that they may avoid. That is our gift and our duty. I'm not going to look away in fear anymore. The Northmen say the gods will fight their last battle at Ragnarok. Their watchmen will blow the horn that can be heard through the whole world. And Odin will speak with the severed head of Nimir, which gives him good counsel. The land of the giants will thunder with the sound of their army on the move. The gods will assemble. The dwarves will leave their stones. The frost giants will come from the east. The Midgard serpent will turn up the waves. Eagles will scream and tear at the corpses with their yellow beaks. The ship of the dead will set sail.
God.
Me too. Wait. 